If you've been following the CPU scene lately, then you must already know how the runaway success of AMD's 3rd gen Ryzen processors has left the market drastically changed. Intel still holds the majority of the market share by far. Years of standing at the top without any competition whatsoever can do that to a company. It's easy for people who don't keep up to date with these sorts of things, which would be the majority of all people, to assume that Intel still has the upper hand. But most gamers already know that if you're looking to buy a CPU, there's no reason not to go with AMD. And while there are many arguments to be made in favor of AMD at the moment, in today's video we'd like to focus specifically on the stock cooler side of things. Namely, we're looking to see whether AMD stock coolers really are better than the ones offered by Intel. And more importantly, whether stock coolers in general are even worth using over an aftermarket solution. So without any further ado, let's begin. There's no arguing against the convenience stock coolers bring to the table as ready-to-go solutions you can always count on. But how good are they really? Overall, the CPU cooler needs to offer two things to be deemed good, cooling efficiency and low noise generation. The second one can be seen as a luxury option by budget gamers, but no matter how low you set your goals, the cooler needs to have enough power to keep the CPU from melting down. So how do stock coolers meet these criteria? Let's take a look. At the bottom of the barrel, we have Intel's low profile cooler and AMD's Wraith Stealth. As a rule, these coolers ship with the cheapest and less demanding CPUs and APUs, so you'd think their small heat sinks wouldn't cause much of a problem. However, it's not uncommon for builds using these coolers to reach over 158 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius when under heavy load, even without any overclocking. And that's not even mentioning the ruckus they cause. Now you may be thinking, well these coolers come with the least powerful and therefore most affordable CPUs, so this is only natural. And you'd be half correct in this assumption. The Wraith Stealth in particular mostly ships with Ryzen 3s, but it's also bundled with certain Ryzen 5s. The incredible Ryzen 5 3600 for example, for all of its many great qualities, comes with a Wraith Stealth cooler. This is a CPU that feels right at home even in certain high-end gaming rigs in which the Wraith Stealth would stick out like a sore thumb. In general, however, these coolers can keep the CPU operational, but you should expect a fair bit of noise when you're gaming. And hey, you've got another thing keeping you warm during winter. Stepping things up a notch, we have Intel's large stock cooler and AMD's Wraith Spire. Now these coolers fare much better than the previous two when it comes to cooling efficiency, courtesy of their larger heatsinks. They generally have no problem keeping things cool at stock settings, although they're still not ideal for overclocking. It's at this point that Intel throws in the towel. However, AMD still has the Wraith Max and Wraith Prism coolers for the high-end CPUs. Both of these coolers are larger and better than the Spire, and they're even decorated with elegant RGB rings. The Wraith Prism in particular is a magnificent stock cooler that can even handle some overclocking. It looks amazing, perfectly fit even for high-end builds on full display in a case with a transparent side panel. So yes, AMD coolers are better than the ones offered by Intel. But the thing is, they still can't hold a candle to aftermarket solutions. The Wraith Prism is somewhat of an exception, since you generally need an aftermarket cooler somewhere near the $50 price range for it to offer a substantial improvement. Nevertheless, the fact remains that there are many coolers out there that can and do outperform it. There is no lack of options and the market is quite diverse, from low-profile coolers that mostly serve as basic replacements for stock coolers, to ones with massive heat sinks and even liquid cooling solutions. The ones we'd like to highlight in this video the most are tower coolers. These are high profile solutions with a massive heat sink, so just keep that in mind since not every case will be able to accommodate them. But if you can find room for them, then they're simply the best air coolers around. Not only do they offer excellent cooling efficiency, they also run very quietly when they aren't pushed too hard. And of course, if you're looking for the best of the best, then you simply must turn your attention towards liquid coolers. They require deeper pockets, but there's simply no beating them when it comes to heat dissipation. Now we won't get into specifics of how liquid coolers work, since we've already made a video on that, so check it out if you're curious. 
The link is in the description along with links to some buyer's guides for the best aftermarket coolers across all price ranges. Regardless of which one you choose, it's bound to work better than any stock solution would. And this leads us to the last question we wanted to discuss in this video. Sure, aftermarket solutions are better, but are they mandatory investments? Do you really need them? Need is a tricky word in this context, since it all boils down to personal preference and performance requirements. Some users delight in overclocking and swear by it, while others just want to keep the temperatures low. Some demand the quietest gaming experience possible, while others just don't want the fan noise to be so loud as to become distracting. Some take pride in putting their hardware on display through glass side panels, while others just want the most functional solution possible. The distinctions go on and on. So the first thing to ask yourself when deciding whether you need an aftermarket cooler is what are my expectations here? If you want to overclock your CPU, then an aftermarket solution is a must in most cases. And the same goes if you want the quietest gaming experience. A tower case would be ideal in this situation as it strikes the best balance between price and performance. But if you want to grind every last bit of juice out of your CPU, then you'll simply need a liquid cooler. On the other hand, if you don't have any overclocking ambitions and don't mind a bit of noise when things get heated, stick with stock coolers. They should work just fine and they'll save you a few bucks. Now, regardless of whether you opt for an aftermarket or a stock solution, you should be aware that its performance will degrade over time unless you do proper maintenance. The problem with overheating is typically not an insufficiently powerful CPU cooler, but massive amounts of dust buildup. Unfortunately, dust buildup is simply inevitable, so you just have to remember to clean the fans from time to time. This goes for the GPU and PSU fans as well. They're just as vulnerable to dust as the CPU cooler. If you're not sure how to clean these pieces of hardware, don't worry. There's a link in the description that'll take you to a video where we'll guide you through this process step by step. Alternatively, the issue could not lie with the coolers, but with the airflow inside the case. Not all cases are made equal. Some feature better airflow, some worse. And there are even those that can double as ovens. If the cooler isn't getting enough cool air from the outside, it won't matter how powerful or how squeaky clean it is. In these cases, the best thing you can do is install an extra case-mounted fan or two. This generally does wonders for any gaming PC. And what's more, case-mounted fans can be found for very cheap, so knock yourself out. One fan on the front and one on the back should be the very minimum in most cases. And no, the fan inside the power supply does not count as a proper exhaust fan. And that about does it for this video. To sum it up, AMD stock coolers are better than the ones Intel offers, but they still pale in comparison to aftermarket solutions. If you don't mind a bit of noise and you don't plan to overclock your CPU, then a stock cooler would work just fine. However, if you plan on squeezing more juice out of the CPU, you'll likely find an aftermarket cooler mandatory. In either case, make sure to clean the fans regularly and install a couple of extra case-mounted fans if you see that the cooler is struggling. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. If you have, you can help us out by liking it and subscribing to our channel. And if you've got friends who would benefit from watching this video, help them out by sharing it either directly or on social media. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, we highly suggest clicking the bell icon so that they don't accidentally sneak past you. We're constantly working on new videos for you, so keep your eyes peeled for the next one. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.